Hello everyone, I am Facundo Diriarte, I'm a thoracic surgery fellow at Fox Chase Cancer Center and Temple University Hospital. Today we're going to talk about postneumonectomy complications. Uh, postneumonectomy complications can be divided into pulmonary complications like pulmonary edema, postneumonectomy syndrome, intraoperative spillage, pleural space complications like postneumonectomy empyema, bronchopleural fistula, esophagopleural fistula, chylothorax, acute hemothorax, contralateral pneumothorax, and cardiovascular complications like arrhythmia, myocardial infarction, pulmonary embolism, intracardiac shunting, cardiac herniation. And other complications like pneumopericardium, postneumonectomy paralysis, and postneumonectomy scoliosis. Regarding vocal cord paralysis, this is most frequently seen after left pneumonectomies, um, and you can evidentiate um, the aspiration when the patient is swallowing. The assessment is um, most of the time at bedside, but if any doubt, we can usually do a formal swallow study. Also, one of the manifestations is a weak cough, which leads to a poor pulmonary toilet. And if the patient has a progressive atelectasis and hypoxia, temporary vocal cord medialization is indicated. With regards to fluid management, excessive fluid given in the perioperative setting can lead to increased post-operative mortality. And immediate perioperative period, in the immediate perioperative period, um, two to five liters will accumulate in the chest and must be replenished. Parameters to guide fluid resuscitation um, are BUN and creatinine and the urinary output. The patient should either be run relatively dry, approximately 80% of predicted needs, or at eovolemia. Pulmonary edema um, has an overall frequency of 2 to 5%, is three times more common following the right than the left side. The pathogenesis is unknown and probably multifactorial and represents a form of ARGS. Clinically, the patient presents with respiratory distress and hypoxemia within the first 72 hours of surgery. The treatment is supportive measures and it has a mortality of 50% when present. Postneumonectomy syndrome reflects extrinsic compression of the distal trachea and mainstem bronchus due to shifting of the mediastinum and hyperinflation of the remaining lung. Usually occurs more than six months following surgery, but it has been reported after 35 years after surgery. It's almost exclusively seen after right side pneumonectomy. After post pneumonectomy, the mediastinum shifts to the site of the removed lung and the lung in the contralateral hemithorax becomes overexpanded. This results in a counterclockwise rotation when interpreting standard axial CT slides to the right of the heart and the tracheobronchial tree after right pneumonectomy. The left mainstem bronchus becomes stretched and the lower low bronchus is kinked over the descending aorta which functions as a pivot point. On the right of the slide we, can, uh, we have a um, CT reconstruction which represents what we just said. Clinically, the patient presents with progressive dyspnea, cough, inspir inspiratory stridor, and recurrent pneumonia in patients at least six months after surgery. Dysphagia can also occur. Pulmonary embolism, recurrence of lung cancer, or progressive COPD have to be excluded. The treatment, surgical repositioning of the mediastinum and filling of the postneumonectomy space, with non-observable material, um, fixed volume or expandable prosthesis, either intra or extra pleural space have been used, and also tracheobronchial stents. Postneumonectomy empyema. The empyema in the postneumonectomy spaces complicates 5% of the pneumonectomies. Early empyema presents uh, between 10 and 14 days after surgery in the first 10 and 14 days and is commonly associated with 
BPF or bronchopleural fistula. A late empyema usually takes three months to appear and is usually acquired via hematogenous route. The diagnosis is confirmed by sampling of the fluid in the postneumonectomy space and the treatment is a drainage of the of the PPS and the unsystemic antibiotics. Regarding to bronchopleural fistula, it occurs in 1.5 to 4.5% of the cases and is associated with a mortality of 29 to 79%. The risk factors associated with it are right sided procedures large diameter over 25 millimeters bronchial stump, residual tumor, concurrent radiation therapy or chemotherapy, age over 60, and prolonged postoperative mechanical ventilation. Clinically, BPF presents with fever, productive cough, hemoptysis, subcutaneous emphysema, and persistent air leak from the chest tube. In the chest x-ray, we can see a new air liquid level in the PPS, multiple air liquid levels, or a change in a pre-existing one. The treatment is the drainage of the pleural space, systemic antibiotics, and then repair of the air leak once PPS has been st sterilized. Early BPFs without empyema can be surgically closed. Um, this is a... Um, a retrospective analysis of 187 patients who underwent pneumonectomy between 1990 and 2000. This paper was presented in the Annals of Thoracic Surgery in 2005. Here in Table 2, we can see the complications of the pneumonectomy, and we can see some of these ones, we already mentioned them like atrial arrhythmias, mechanical ventilation, bronchopleural fistula, which um, uh, was more prevalent in the right-sided group with nine cases versus six cases in the left-sided group. Um, this was statistically significant. Pneumonia, empyema, recurrent laryngeal nerve palsy. We can see how the left-sided group had 10 cases versus no cases in the right-sided group. Um, Patients also presented with ARDS, CHF, myocardial infarction, sepsis, pulmonary embolism, and the mortality. Um, although there were seven in the right-sided in the right-sided pneumonectomies versus four, this was not statistically significant. In, in table four, we can see the technical factors that were related to the bronchopleural fistula rate. And we can see how um, the right side uh, pneumonectomy was a factor uh, related to um, the presentation of BPFs and also a handsome bronchial stump. And this concludes our quick overview regarding post pneumonectomy complications. Uh, thank you everyone for your attention.